I'm going to show you how to put some quantity surveying information, what's called a QSID, into um, the BIM model. So to maybe start this, I'm going to click the ground floor view, um, or maybe the foundation view, and I'm going to select, um, let's say for example, one of the pads. Now I can see that that's the pile cap. I'm gonna right click it, select all instances, visible in view or maybe in the entire project in this case would be fine um, i'm going to have a look is there any object or property parameter in here i can use to actually just input what that element number is and there is i can use the comments here or i can edit type and maybe put it into the description text uh, parameter here so i'm actually going to do it why not do it in the comments put in 19 substructure click apply so now if I just maybe pick one I should probably see it down there and I do so I'll do the same for the strip footings or the ground beams select all instances in the entire project and again in the comment section element 19 and it's available to me there I'm just going to click substructure click apply do the same for these two 1015 wide ground beams select all instances entire project and type in 19 substructure click apply um, i'm going to click the ground floor i can also do it for the walls let's say for example i wanted to apply it to that basic wall there I'll right click select all instances in the entire project and there we have it on that ground floor plan it's done the same for the first floor and the top of the parameter walls i just can't see it because this is the only one i have in view and scroll down this one of course is element 21 external walls and click apply so again if i select anyone individually i should see it in there so that's done that for all those objects um, again, if I maybe pick one of the internal walls, right click, select all instances, the entire project. It select all those particular objects in the entire project. And I'm going to type in, this is 22 internal walls and partitions. And I would essentially go around that BIM model. I can do it in any particular view. I can do it in the 3D, selecting certain walls. I can already see that that one is got the external walls in. I could click the roof, put the roof element in, click the windows, select all instances, put the windows element in. And I wanna pretty much code every single object I can in the model. So go ahead and do that. I've coded that to the best of my ability, working through some views 2D views, possibly coding it in 3D, and even using any sections that are available to me. Um, I can create my own sections, and I'll show you how to do that in a few moments. But sections are quite handy in terms of coding because they can get into maybe the internal objects that I can see in maybe some of the other views. Now I want to check that all my objects are coded. One way to do that is to click view at the top and create a schedule. So view schedules, drop down, and create a material takeoff. What comes up here is a multi-category material takeoff, and I'm gonna leave it as a multi-category takeoff and click OK. The fields I'm going to use, I'm certainly gonna need the comments field. So if I scroll down, it's in alphabetical order, comments. And a comments course is the field or the parameter I use to put in my QS ID and I'm going to continue on the next one I'm going to use is family so I've added more fields there family and type type material name I might take the material area and um, take maybe the material volume so I have some fairly typical naming conventions there in Revit um, that should capture pretty much most of my objects or at least the name the appropriate name of most of my objects and i've thrown in for good measure there 
the actual material name and then some <coughs> some quantities that may come up as well just to show you that they are available in schedules so once I've done that click OK and this is essentially my schedule now I can increase the row width just to see exactly what's going on and there I can see my material area my material volume just to make sure all my objects are coded here I can see that there's codes against or a QS ID against most of those objects keep scrolling down see if there's any fields missing oh and there's a few here so this is um, it looks like it's a rising wall um, so that will be element 19 so I can actually go ahead and type it in substructure those last few items substructure there we go so I'll keep going just to make sure and I can see that there's codes if there was something that wasn't coded it should show up there and be blank like I just showed you and you can actually go ahead and type the field in there once you've completed your schedule and you're happy with it um, you have an opportunity to keep it in Revit of course um, but you also have an opportunity to export it so to do that I'm going to export it to Excel a little bit of a long-winded process it's not as straightforward as you might think but you got to click file up here at the top left hand corner click export uh, scroll down to or click the little arrow reports and click schedule now I only have an opportunity to save this as a delimited text file so I'm going to go ahead and do that I'm going to save it to my desktop click save um, again some export schedule options here keep the checkbox checkboxes checked um, let my field output options field eliminator I'm going to change that to comma and click OK so that should save now and if you wanted to see it there it is there my desktop click it and it's not really in an order or format we can use in terms of possible cost estimating um, so I'm going to click that and what I'm going to do is I'm going to import that text file into Excel so I'm going to open up Excel and I am going to open up other workbooks I'm going to browse to my text file what it, what it is doing right now is it looking it's looking for Excel files um, but I need to change that to all files navigate to my desktop click on the multi category material takeoff click open I need to select in the text import wizard select eliminated click next change the tab to comma because that's essentially what I did when I was exporting and select next click finish and this is essentially my export so it's a little bit <clears throat> a little bit more long-winded um, than maybe it needs to be but once you've got it into Excel you can use all uh, Excel's functionality to create your cost estimate so I'm going to move back now to Revit um, one thing that doesn't come in in the multi-category material takeoff uh, schedules are room information so I'm going to scroll back up to my <coughs> ground floor plan and if you can remember previously we inputted some rooms and we named those rooms let's say for example I hover over the ground office ground floor office and select that up comes this particular room in the room properties if I scroll down to the identity data it'll give me what the name and number of the room is <coughs> in this case it's the ground office but it'll also give me some parameters here in respect to finishes so what I'm going to do is maybe fill out for an example purposes uh, fill out some of this information so let's say the ceiling finish is painted plasterboard okay and <coughs> the wall finishes is painted Lock work are also sorry also painted plasterboard and the floor finish is carpet okay <clears throat> click apply and I I can repeat uh, that process for all the rooms on my ground floor and do the same <clears throat> for the rooms on my first floor and I would add that information in there uh, once I've done that, one way to check, just like the material takeoff schedule, one way to check that all information is in there is to create a schedule. So again, the same way I did before, click view, 
uh, click schedules. This time, instead of material takeoff schedule, I'm going to select schedule slash quantities. And I'm going to scroll down to <coughs> my option here for creating a room schedule. So there we have it, rooms. Schedule building components, checkbox, room schedule, click OK. Now, again, I want to import in some fields here. And I might start with uh, in order, maybe start with the number, bring that in. The name, bring that in. And then I'm going to add in the finishes. So ceiling finish, uh, floor finish, and uh, wall finish, which will probably be down the end. Uh, and from there then I'm going to add the quantities area for sure and um, actually unbounded well perimeter and unbounded height okay there's nothing in the volume right now um, I might even bring in the level that's on move that up uh, <clears throat> in between number and name and click OK so what you'll see here is essentially the number, the level it's on, the name. If there is information in there, and you can see that we've already put that information in the ground floor office, painted plasterboard, painted plasterboard to the wall finish, and carpet to the floor finish. I also have <coughs> an area, a perimeter, and an unbounded height. What I'm missing there is a wall area, so I can add that. To show you how to do that, you would click Insert in the Modify Schedule Quantities. This time though, I don't have an available field here to bring in. There is no wall area calculation. So what I'm going to do is create one. So I've got the little FX here, which is Add a Calculated Parameter. If I select that, I'm going to call it Wall Area. I am going to click formula here and create the formula three dots if I say my perimeter times my unbounded height and then I'm going to close the brackets and then I'm going to change it from a number type to an area type otherwise that won't calculate correctly click OK and now I've got a wall area in there click OK again and I have got some wall areas I'm going to delete some of the rows here that aren't quite coming out so if I click delete there and uh, click that row it looks like it's some sort of a duplicate click that row and there we have a good room schedule now again I've got to remember that I can actually input in uh, possibly the floor finishes in the office or carpet. Office 2, carpet, etc. So I can also input in the finish information in my schedule as well as what I showed you earlier in the actual room properties. Again, as I showed you um, a number of minutes ago, if you click File, click Export, click down reports and export your schedule just like you exported your material takeoff and import it in uh, to Excel you can add room information into your Excel spreadsheet thank you